Olympia. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. My name is Kim Pong, and I am the CEO and founder of Strength Asia. Strength Asia is an organization based here in Singapore where we spend a lot of time uh, working with organizations around uh, you know, Asia, helping leaders, managers, executives, and teams come together uh, to be more engaged with one another. In other words, be more satisfied in whatever we are doing and to be more influential and impactful in whatever we are doing. We are all in a very strange time, all working from home, COVID-19, especially here in Singapore. We don't have a total lockdown, but we are all working from home. And this has really changed you know, a lot of things uh, in, in the way we see work, in the way we relate to our colleagues, in the way you know, we are going to be working with our customers. I don't think things are going to change. Uh, sorry, I don't think things are going to stay the same. But I think things are going to change. You know, for you know, for for the very definite future here. So once again, welcome. Um, today, um, really, it's about uh, you know the third of our four-part series of working smart uh, during COVID nineteen, um, and uh, today's title is entitled you know beyond work finding your passion now we got one more in the four-part series next friday so remember to put it on your calendar and join us at the same time for next friday but today we are going to talk about passion here and this is a really um common topic that many people have often come up to me and say hey pong you know do i need to have passion in my work um do i need to have passion in my life you know what is what's this thing, what, what's this thing called passion anyway so let's go straight to the point here and let's talk about it you know finding your passion and the first question of the day you know what is passion what is passion to you what is passion to me what is passion to people around the world here now this is a uh, it is a live zoom call as well as uh, it is a facebook live uh, streaming so i would really love to hear from you on a chat uh, in zoom and then on facebook live on the comments right so i would love to hear from everybody here you know what is passion according to your own experience according to your own own um, life here so go ahead you know uh, and and use the chat box and use the facebook comments and tell me right what is passion to you so while you do that i'll play some music while we wait for the uh, the responses to come in here right All right. So use the chat box, guys. You know, what is passion to you? Now, while we are waiting for the answer, somebody just sent in a, uh, a, a chat message. That they, they cannot see my face. Can you see my face? If you can, just wave at me, uh, Dinas and uh, Carries and all that. Yeah, you can see my face. Cool. Yeah. So what is passion to you, guys? Use the chat box, right? I, I love this piece here, right? Somebody just came in and this is from Kevin and he says passion is doing what I love, right? Doing what I love. And I love uh, another one that just, just, just came in here. Um, let me just do this. Oh, how do I do that? Oops, sorry. Oops. Passion is a strong, controllable emotion. Well, that's true, right? It's a strong, controllable emotion. Uh, Ah Wong says something that drives, something that drives uh, me. You know, what else is there? Something that makes you come alive doing what you love. And this is from uh, Palenzuela Cruz. Hello. Um, And, um, you know, doing what I love. Passion is doing what I love. You know, so all these are really, really good, um, you know, uh, indications of what passion is all about. But what truly is passion? Well, there's this guy called Soren Kierkegaard. Uh, he's a philosopher. And Soren Kierkegaard defined passion as something that is the hope of the possible. It is the hope of the possible. It is, it is not the imagination you know, of the fantasy, right? But it's the hope of the possible. So two things here about passion. Number one, it is something that can be done. Number two, it may be something that is not yet present in your life. That's why we call it a hope, right? It's the hope of of the possible now today um, I'm, I'm gonna be out starting this whole session by asking you you know a, a simple question here right and the question here is this now do we find passion to live out our life or do we live life to find passion what do you think it is do we find passion to live life or do we live life 
to find passion. And to do this, right, for those on Zoom, I'm going to you know, do a very simple poll with you here. So I'm going to launch a poll and basically you just pick one answer. And by the way, your responses is anonymous. So go ahead and just, uh, you know, tell me your answers, right? Do you find passion to live life or do you live life to find passion? And after this, I'm going to share the results with everybody. And for those who are actually uh, in Facebook Live, go ahead, you know, just put on the comments. Do you find passion to live life first or do you find life to live out your passion here? And as we are, you know, waiting for the answers to come in, I am seeing uh, more people coming onto Facebook Live and uh, responding to what is passion. Uh, SMQ Fatima talks about passion is a driving force here, right? Passion is a driving force. Cool. Excellent. All right. So I think a lot of people are still coming in. It's neck to neck for now, guys. Keep the, uh, keep the responses coming in. All right. Very cool. Excellent. All right. I'm going to be ending the poll right now and sharing the results with everybody. So this is the answer, guys, right? To find passion to live, we have 57%. To live life to find passion, we have 43%. Now, this is really interesting, right? I, I kind of expected it, that the first one, finding passion to live life, will actually outstrip uh, the, the second choice, right? Which is to live life to find passion here. So what is the right answer? Well, together over the next uh, you know 25 minutes or so, we're going to find this out, which is the right answer, to find passion to live life or to live life to find passion passion here. Now, I like to believe that many of us, we are, uh, let me just close the poll box here, right? I like to believe that many of us, we are, you know, subconsciously amazing, but we are consciously normal, isn't it? You know, when nobody's looking, you know, you're singing on top of your lungs while you're in the shower, you know, when nobody's looking, you somehow are able to be the best version of yourself, right? But somehow when you appear in front of people, all of a sudden, you know, you, you become more conscious, you become more self-conscious, more, more, um, you know, more censored you know, on, on the way you, you, you behave or talk and all that. I like to believe that we are subconsciously amazing, but we are consciously normal. But today, I want to challenge you, right? Everybody out here, in, in, in both in Sing So today, by the way, we have guests coming in from Singapore, from Taiwan, China, uh, UK, uh, uh, and also I think India, um, and also, I believe, in the Philippines, right? So, hello, everybody. You know, I want to challenge everybody here who's on this call today that, you know, can we give ourselves full permission to do one very simple thing? Let's not be subconsciously amazing and be consciously normal every day, but can we try doing this here, right? Can we become uh, amazing normal, right? Can we make amazing normal for us every day here? Now, can you imagine that, that if you can make amazing normal every day, you know, how awesome is that in the relationships, in the work that we do, in everything that we are part of here? So I, I want to share a, a really quick, um, you know, concept of this whole idea of passion here. And it starts with this, this guy called Peter Drucker. Now, Peter Drucker is a, an American uh, management guru. Uh, he's no longer with us, unfortunately. He's passed on. But his writings, his thoughts, uh, his leadership has impacted a lot in the, uh, in, in the corporate world around the world here. And the way Peter Drucker looks at our life, he sees it in two, two life, right? Life number one and life number two. Life one, life two. And the way he looks at life one is this. Life number one, right, is a life where we spend all our time just making a living, right? It is about making a living. It's about you going to school. It is about you getting training. It's about you climbing the corporate ladder. It's about, you know, all of us, you know, making sacrifices so that we can make a living for ourselves and for our family. And that is perfectly the right thing to do for everyone. Every one of us will, should have and must have a life one, right? That's focused on making a living. Now, what about life two? Well, life too is a life that is not just about making a living. Life too is a life that is, about, that, that is about making a life. It is a life that gives you greater joy, greater engagement, greater impact, greater influence, greater meaning, greater purpose in everything that we do. And by the way, life number one and life number two, they are not mutually exclusive. That means it doesn't mean if you have one, you cannot have two, you have two, you cannot have one. No, they are actually together, right? Life one and life two are together. Now, this is really interesting, right? And this is the observation of Peter Drucker here. He, you know, when he look at our lives here, life one and life two, he observed that for those of us who are living life one, we are, many of us around the world, we are over-prepared 
for life, number one. We are over-prepared in making a living, right? We are taking all those extra courses. We are, we, are, we are going to the university. We are getting all the trainings and all kinds of stuff, right? Um, you know, just to make a living, over-prepared for that. And then he observed, when it comes to life, number two, about the life of greater joy, greater meaning, greater purpose, greater engagement, we are grossly under-prepared. You know, I like to say that life number one, we are all professionals. We are all professionals at work, right? But when it comes to the life of ourselves, right, the meaning, the purpose, the passion part, we are mere amateurs. So today, I really, you know, a, a, a second challenge for you today, you know, the first was to make your amazing normal. The second challenge to you today for you and I is this. Can we, you know, while we are focusing on building a life one, which is making a living, can we begin to spend time looking at life two, which is about making a life? And today's conversation is about, you know, finding your passion. And passion has a big part to play in life number two here. Now, and, and the interesting thing here is this. Why is it that, you know, we cannot have life number two? Or most of us find it really hard to figure out what our passion is, you know, and the reason is because we keep life number one and life number two separate here. Now, listen to this guy here, right? Uh, his name is called Jim Collins. And Jim Collins wrote a book called, you know, From Good to Great. And he made a really interesting observation. He says, you know, why capitulate? You know, well, he made a very interesting observation about life number two. And he says, why capitulate to irrelevance after we've spent decades accumulating empirical wisdom, right? Uh, why capitulate to irrelevance after we spend decades accumulating empirical wisdom? By the way, I just saw something really, really interesting, right? Somebody just said here, right, that life number two, uh, let me just drag it up here so you can see it, that life number one is tiring. It is so true, right? Life number one is tiring. Um, but let me go back to uh, Jim Collins here now. He says, why capitulate to irrelevance after we spend decades accumulating, accumulating empirical wisdom? Let me say this in simpler English for you here. It simply means this. It's, he says, why do we spend all our time, that tiring life, as, as Lisa just now said, right? The t life that's really, really tough, the life that's really, really hard. Why do we go through life, number one, making a living, where we actually have so much experiences, so much wisdom from life, number one. And Jim Collins call all those experiences, all those success, all those failures as empirical data, right? As empirical wisdom. These are data points that tells us a number of things in life, number one. It tells us, you know, what is it that we love to do? What is it that we hate to do? What is it that draws us? What is it that repels us? What is it that makes us, you know, really amazing? And what is it that makes us really, really weak here? We have gone, we have, we have go, we have gone through life one and we are still going through life one and we are gaining experience. And this is what Jim Collins is saying. Why is it that when we come to life number two, we throw away that we, everything that we have learned in life number one to start life number two, to find our passion, to figure out the meaning and purpose in our life as if we have no experience, right? He is saying in life number one, you have so many data points, so many empirical evidence to tell you what you're good at, not so good at, what you're passionate about and what you are not. Now, if you look at your life, number one, you look at today, your career, you look at your work life, you look at everything about the things that you do for a living, and you plot all these points and you kind of connect them up together, they actually tell you a trajectory of your life story. They tell you a story of where your passion is, which is in life number two here. Now, this is really, really interesting. Now, why is that? Well, see, the whole idea is this, right? When I was, I, I want to bring you back to when I was 38 years old. I'm 57 years old this year, right? So when I was 38, when I was 57, you know, these were a period of time that was really, really, um, uh, unique for my life here, right? Um, because this this was a time in 38 years old, I, I, I begin to seriously start searching for my passion. You know, I have been involved in that life for making a living and finally I said, oh gosh, life number two, let me find my passion. And when I was 38 years old, I essentially was trying to find passion to live my life. And it was really, really tough. I was trying to look for the things because you know why, as Lisa said, life number one, very tiring, you know, so I really do not want to repeat all my mistakes all over again. And I told myself, why don't I just find something that I'm really, really passionate about and go after that and such that my life will be perfect, right? That was what I, I was thinking when I was 38 years old. But fast forward 19 years later, 57, when I look back, I realized that finding passion to live my life is even more tiring than life one. But actually, the secret to finding a passion, you know, is to really first learn how to live your life and then in the process, 
find your passion. Now, why is that? Well, the way I look at it is this, right? Just imagine, if you're trying to look for passion in, in what it is, it's like somebody has just put a camera right into your face here, isn't it? Now, if somebody puts a camera right into your face, what do you see? You see nothing but the camera, right? If you stand in front of a tree, right, what do you see? All you see is the tree and nothing around you. And that was the problem, you know, when we begin to find passion, to live our life. We are trying to look for the very thing and I think consumes us by blocking our face, blocking our vision here. The idea here is to pull the camera back. As we begin to pull the camera back, it begins to reveal the very things that's beside us, around us, behind us, and in front of us. And these are the very things that potentially may be things, maybe events, maybe issues, maybe people that drives our passion every day. It begins to review the, the, the colors in our life. It begins to review the different perspective, the different beauties, uh, the beautiful stuff around our life that we potentially can be passionate about. One of the interesting things about passion, ladies and gentlemen, is that passion is right in front of you in plain sight you know it is just right in front of you staring in staring at you in your face but many of us may lack that consciousness right or may lack that intentionality to look for passion that is just right in front of us here so going back to the same question here right what is passion well i hope to share with you seven ideas on what passion is so the first one is this number one a passion is something that would definitely help people. Passion helps people. If you are passionate about something, whatever you are involved in that passion, it is going to bring value to people. Passion is not just for your own entertainment and enjoyment. I'm saying, no, I'm saying, in the first place, if you're passionate about something, yeah, it does give you enjoyment, pleasure, and all that, right? But first and foremost, passion, when you are really, really, you know, in, into the thick of it, it helps people. It makes people's lives better. Uh, it, it improves people's value in themselves. It brings people together. You know, and, and that is the very thing that passion is. The second one is this. If you're involved in passion, eventually you're going to be really, really good at that. Because passion is not just about you know, imagining or fantasizing about this awesome thing that you're going to do. But it's getting out there to try that very passion. And if this is truly your passion, you potentially can become really, really good at that, right? Now, somebody asked me, what, 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 what about you know, some things that we are passionate about, but we can never be really, really good in this? Well, it reminded me of a story, uh, well, not story, but you guys have seen this before, right? American Idol. Uh, people go for the audition and say, hey, what are you passionate about? And they say, oh, I'm passionate about music, right? And the judges say, all right, go ahead, sing your song. And the minute that guy opens his mouth, the camera zooms into all the judges' faces and it was pure agony, isn't it? It's like, my gosh, you cannot sing. But yet that person is passionate. Well, this is interesting, right? If you are passionate about something, but no matter how hard you try, and you're not really good in that, I want you not to throw away everything, but I want you to pause and ask yourself, is there something else beyond music, sorry, beyond singing in music, for example, that you are passionate about? Maybe it's about composition, maybe it's about mixing, maybe it's about lighting, maybe it's about stage management regarding the music space that you possibly are passionate about. But one thing I know for sure, right? I be, uh, one thing I know for sure is that when you are passionate about something, you eventually becomes really, really good in that. The third thing is this, passion makes you willingly get your hands dirty. Now, Passion, you know, learning to do passion is never ever an easy thing, but it's an easier thing to live life, you know, with passion than to live life without passion, isn't it? So one, I, one thing I know about passion is that it really drives you and I, you know, to be very willing to make the sacrifices, to invest into the very things that allows us, you know, to be better in what we are doing. It allows us to get our hands dirty. The next one is this, you feel it. When you are into something that you're passionate about, you feel it. And it is not just about the emotions, um, but it's really about the energy, right? When you're, when you're involved in something that you're truly passionate about and you're good at doing it, you're good in bringing value to people, you're helping people, you feel uh, tremendously energized, you feel satisfied, and in deep within you, there's a deep pleasure in, in wanting to do this. And for some of us, you know, we probably are very willing to do what we are passionate about 
even for free without without being paid right but uh, I, I'm gonna warn you right try not to do too many of those uh, if you are passionate about something try to get people to pay you for the very passion that you're really really good in because that puts you in the best of class in what you do the next one here is this passion may not be singular now this is probably uh, one of the you know, greatest realization that I've uh, I discovered in my last 19 years trying to figure out what passion is it may not be just one passion and sometimes we try to restrict our life to just one single passion right but it's about um, it's about you know you know uh, figuring out hey maybe there's more than just one passion maybe there's two maybe there's three so don't don't be too hard on yourself when you say oh my gosh you know I'm, I'm so passionate about so many different things well that's cool right the, the challenge for you is how can you make them really really good in the way you 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 express it and the way you help people here all right cool so i'm going to stop here for a second here and kind of check in and see if there's any more uh chats on 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 uh on the chats here i got a question here uh, that came in how do you know whether your passions are worth pursuing and this is a question that came in from uh, Stephen Theo I think if I'm correct yeah how do you know whether your passions are worth pursuing well you don't know until you try something right um, and the whole idea of passion is that you will never know if you just think about it you will never know uh, if you just imagine it but you only know when you begin to try something and let me just show you the next uh, uh, meaning of what passion is right our passion lights up our why. Our passion lights up our motivation, right? Passion is something that once you know what it is, it becomes an unstoppable force, right? That drives you forward to try out everything that you think could be your passion. So Stephen, if you're hearing me right now, right? If something that you think is your passion, but you're not sure whether is it worth trying, I say go out there and try. But don't try, don't, don't sell your house or sell your car to go and try your passion, right? Do something small, right? So that even if you fail, you won't fail miserably, right? At least you know like, oh, okay, um, the reason I fail is because of this, but hey, I kind of enjoy that, right? I kind of like that. I think I can be potentially quite good in that. Get back in there and do some more. But there are some times after you try something, you go like, hey, it's not so cool, right? Well, move out. Passion is our why. It drives us ceaselessly to do the very things that we feel very deeply about, right? And then passion is action, right? Passion is action. Um, and action is essentially this, right? It's not about thinking, but it's about doing here. So remember what I said just now, uh, Stephen, don't just think about it. Go ahead and try it, right? Try something a little, then try something a little more. And before you know it, hey, it becomes overflowing. It becomes something that potentially you can be really, really good at. So, so these are the seven things that I've shared with you about uh, pa what is passion here. Now, I'm going to ask you a real quick question now, everybody. Use the chat box and use the Facebook Live here comments, right? Of the seven things here, which of these seven things here most resonate with you, right? So I'm just going to go back to everything here again. So the first one is, you know, it helps people, right? It helps people. The second one is that eventually you're going to be good in something. The third one is that you get your hands dirty. The third one is you feel it. The fourth one is that passion may not be singular. The fifth one is that passion lights up your motivation. It lights up your why. And passion is action. Passion is not thinking alone. It's not just discovering alone, but passion is action. So go ahead, use the chat box, everybody. Tell me of this seven uh, uh, expression of passion, which is the one that resonates with you the most. Let's do this. So I'm hearing uh, you know, someone uh, from Hitesh. Hitesh says, passion is action. Awesome, man. Way to go. And Kevin it says, lights up. Sammy Wong puts down as passion is my why. Passion is the reason as to why I'll make all the sacrifices, why I'll do so much just to get it right. All right, R. Wong says, passion is action. Steven says, gonna go with the feel. Dr. Sherman Ong says, passion is action. Jenny says, passion is action. Joanne Lee says, passion is action. That's pretty cool. And Joey Palenzuela says, this may not be singular. Yeah, 
You know, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. You know, when when I realize that passion is not singular in my life, I tell you, I I I I hew a sigh of relief here, because all the while I always thought I must have only one piece of passion. Uh, but no, for some of us, it's more than just one, right? Very cool. Yep. The feel it. Bun Chuan says feel it. Jeremiah says passion is getting our hands dirty. It is a form of action. Absolutely, yeah. Sean says passion is action. Pandrina says it's the feeling. Right, and, you know, and one of the things about the feelings here, guys, I just want to add on to this. Right, sometimes when you are into passion, you may not actually feel anything about it. Right, um, I remember when I first got into coaching, I felt really nothing about it. I just thought it was an interesting thing to try. But the interesting thing is this, right? The more I coach people, and the better I become, the more I feel the energy and the impact that I'm bringing to people. So for some of us, that feeling may come later, but the action is the one that first lead it. Because once you get in there, you realize, my gosh, naturally, I'm really good at this. And because of that, it drives you to want to be more equipped, to be better in all that, right? Uh, Sinjin from Singapore say you'll feel it. Siki says, you know, get your hands dirty. Lisa says passion is to help people. And that is absolutely spot on, right? Um, so a lot of people are coming in. It is motivation coupled with energy and interest. Passion is my why. Life without passion is death. Oh my gosh, this is kind of serious. And actually, it's kind of true to some extent, right? You know, you're actually living, but you're actually dead. <laughs> All right. So if you are resonating with what I'm saying and you are dying or you are like, hey, I really want to find out what my passion is, then there are a couple of uh, suggestions I have for you. Now, one, um, now before I go into that, right, you know, where was I? Yeah, it, there are a couple of suggestions I have for you, but I just want to, you know, say this to you really, really quickly, you know. As you begin to discover passion, you know, don't, don't think about getting passion clear. You, you can't. But you can get clearer about your passion as you live your life, right? As you, as you try different things every day. Because the whole idea is about action, right? It's about doing a little, then a little more, and then overflowing, you know, over time here. So as I was saying, right, if you resonate with all that I'm saying today and you really want to find out what your passion is, I got two suggestions for you, right? Uh, Strength Asia is running two events. One is called the Reframe Masterclass. The Reframe Masterclass is a three-day event, you know, uh, between 9 to 11.30 a.m. in the morning. Um, and it, it is a process that helps people figure out their passion. Figure out who are you like when you're truly in your element, impacting the world around you with your passion. Now, if this is something that you think is going to help you, can I ask you, go to the Strength Asia uh, homepage, uh, click on the link there, and there'll be more information waiting for you here. Now, there's another second class that we are running. Uh, called Unleash the Real You, right? And this is happening again over two days between 18th and 19th of May in the evening at 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. Um, and essentially, we are, you know, in, in this, this, this Unleash the Real You, we focus on helping you find out what your natural strengths are. What are the things that you're naturally very, very good in? Because very often, your strength is a clue to your passion here. So again, if you're interested to join us for the Reframe Masterclass or the Unleash the Real You, go to our website, click on the links there, and it will give you more information and some details on registration here. So I guess that's it, right? Um, so one of the things here is this, right? I'm going back here to the same question that we asked uh, right at the beginning here. Do you find passion to live life or do you live life to find passion? I'm really hoping that your answer will be the second one, that you will live your life to find your passion. Because the first one, finding your passion just to live your life, is a very, very tiring thing here. But if you live your life and you try something, get your hands dirty, you experiment, you ask yourself, how do you feel, right? Uh, and you, how, how are people being helped by what I'm doing? All of a sudden, you may begin to see the very thing that you're most passionate about, standing, sitting right in front of you. Now, if you have forgotten everything, well, this is the final thing that I'm going to share with you, right? Passion is action. Passion is not dreaming. It's not about hallucinating. It is not about wishing. Well, passion is action. So with that, thank you very much for everybody. And, you know, before I go on, I think we have about a couple more minutes here. Now, are there any questions that you want to ask? If you, if you, if there are any questions, go ahead and put it into the chat box. I'll take another minute or two just to look at those questions if there are. If not, I'm just going to, you know, look at our Facebook Live's comment and see, I, I kind of share some of the information that we have with people here. Let's see, go on this. 
So this is from Arian Matthias. He said, you know, if it gives meaning to my life, daunting task, oh, hold on, let me just, daunting task aren't too hard and I'll be willing to push through in everything, right? That is uh, from Arian here. And I like, I like, um, I like this one from uh, this lady. I can't read Chinese very well. Action is my motivation. Just need to find out towards what gets direction for who, what, and when. Absolutely spot on here. Cool. So let me just scroll down to uh, the chat box here and see if there's any other questions. All right. There isn't. So with that, everybody, I just want to thank you uh, for this time here. Now, I'm just going to keep this channel open uh, shortly after. I'm, we're just going to let people who wants to go off, go off uh, uh, right now. But in about a minute or two time, I'm going to come back again. And if you have any questions or you want to chat with me, uh, just stay online for, for the next five, ten minutes. And, you know, we'll, we'll talk again later. If not, remember those two events that's coming up, uh, you know, uh, over the next uh, couple of weeks here. So. Um, see you again next uh, Friday for our final session, which is, you know, what has COVID-19 taught us as businesses and as people? So with that, everybody, you know, live your life, find your passion, be safe, be strong. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm back everybody. So I, I think for those of us who are around, uh, I'll be more than happy uh, to you know, take questions on the chat box. Um, We're not going to open up the, um, the, the uh, what do you call that, the audio, uh, given that there are quite a number of people around. So if there are any questions, go ahead and use the chat box here. I'll be more than happy to uh, you know, respond to your questions. So are there any one of you with any questions? Sorry. Yeah. There's a question from Christina in yep. the chat that says, "Doesn't purpose lead to passion?" Doesn't purpose lead to passion? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. I think um, 
purpose leads to passion and passion leads to purpose. I think they're interchangeable. They're like, you know, twin peas in a pot here. Um, so very often, you know, we, we may know what our purpose is uh, and our passion actually drives us. Remember what I said just now, that passion really uh, is the unstoppable force of uh, why your motivation, right? It drives you to fulfill the very purpose that you think, um, you know, is it, yours to claim. So yeah, I mean, uh, purpose do point to passion and also vice versa. Passion also do point to purpose. Yeah. Cool. Okay, there's another question on Facebook Live. Uh, and the question is, is there an age limit to pursuing passion? Is there an age limit to pursuing passion? Well, I, I think uh, when you are older, I always like to believe that you've got more context in your life, uh, which is your life number one, right? That allows you uh, to plot more data points to figure out what are the things that potentially you are passionate about. Um, but when you're young, you know, the young is fearless, you know, they dare to try anything, you know. So if you live in an environment whereby you are young and your your parents or your friends, you know, are, are kind of encouraging to try anything, um, yeah, I mean, people would do that, right? Because at the end of the day, passion is action. It's about trying something a little, then doing a little more. Uh, and before you know it, if this is something that is truly your passion, it becomes overflowing. Um, maybe one more point on uh, uh, age, right? Peter Drucker, the guy that I quoted for life number one, life number two, uh, he's a very passionate guy. Uh, but the thing about him is that his passion really begin to yield fruits for him only at the age of 70 years old. <laughs> Can you believe it? You know, so he write a lot of books, right? But two thirds of his books were written uh, at the age of 70 years old and up. Uh, and those two thirds of the books that he had written were the books that changed the world uh, in the management world. Um, and that's that's what I meant by when you're truly passionate about something, eventually you become really, really good in something. And while you are getting yourself equipped and trained in those very things, uh, that the passion fuels the unstoppable force of motivation to kind of drive you forward uh, to learn those really, really tough things that's required of you to perfect your passion here. Yeah, sure. Cool. Okay, and we have one last question, and that is, is passion nature or nurture? Is passion nature or nurture? I, I like to believe that it is both. Um, I think the way we are, we are hardwired, right, when we are born into the world, just give us a certain natural focus on certain things. So for example, some of us are much more focused on things that are emotional. Some of us are much more fo naturally focused on things that are factual. Some of us are very focused on things that are, uh, you know, that visual. Some of us are, us are more fact, uh, focused on things that are um, more related to words and all that, right? These are the things that we didn't really kind of train ourselves to do that. It's, it's, it's like when you're young, you kind of know what is it that you prefer. So that's the hard wiring piece here. Then there's a nurture piece here, right? As you grow up, you begin to pick up different skills, you begin to pick up different interests, you begin to pick up different exposure. This opens you up to a world of experimentation. It opens you up into a world of figuring out, hey, you know, actually I'm, I'm really good in music. Hey, I'm really, really good in doing accounting work. Hey, I'm really, really, you know, bad uh, in kicking a football here, right? And I don't kind of like it too much. Um, so that, that's the nurture piece here, where you, you, you get exposed to a, a, a variety of different things. Um, that allows you to just experiment and test, right? So back in, you know, go, going back to the, the, the seventh premise of what passion is, passion is action, you know? You don't try, you don't know. Um, and if you try something, then it, you go like, hmm, maybe I'll do a little bit more, all right? A little bit more. And before you know it, it's overflowing. Yeah, cool. So I think there's no more questions on the chat. Uh, and I think also there's no more questions on the Facebook Live. So with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for your time. I really thank you for your, you know, for your patience and for your appreciation. Hope to see you everybody next Friday, right? With that, take care. Bye-bye.